Welcome to the Teamwork Advantage podcast with Greg Gregory. Join us as Greg interviews powerful thought leaders and successful team and leadership experts from across the country on teamwork, leadership, and organizational culture. Now let's check in for this week's episode. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Teamwork Advantage. I am Greg Gregory. This is a podcast where we help you understand everything about teamwork. So we focus in teamwork, leadership, and the organizational culture. Now, we're looking at it from so many different aspects. We're looking at it from the professional athletes, from business philosophers, all the way through. And today, taking another different twist. Today, we're fortunate to have with us a singer, songwriter, music producer, multi-instrumentalist. Keaton Simons has released numerous albums, EPs, singles, best known for his hundreds of film and television placements, including his song, What I Go, from one of my favorite TV shows, Suits. In addition to his prolific solo career, Keaton has also played with various artists ranging from Snoop Dogg to Chris Cornell to his current gig as lead guitarist for country music superstar Brett Young. Along with his writing and uh, production partner Noah Needleman and filmmaker Dennis Dugan, Keaton recently completed both the soundtrack and the score for the soon-to-be-released motion picture Love, Weddings, and Other Disasters, starring Diane Keaton and Jeremy Irons. Talking to us today about how the idea of music and teamwork comes into play when everybody's in different parts of the country or the world and pulling it all together. Welcome to the show, Keaton Simons. It's a pleasure to have you. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about this because I've known for years that music can be done in so many different ways. Back in the 70s, uh, they would do the vocals for a song called Liar by Three Dog Night. Yep. It was actually done in the bathroom while the musical instruments were in a whole different studio about 100 yards away. Of course, absolutely. So, and so when you start pulling all that together, and it's kind of interesting. So what can you tell us about how important teamwork and collaboration is in the music industry? I find it to be extremely important. I mean, there are, of course, there's a lot that you can do on your own, especially in the modern music industry. And mm -hmm. certainly from the creative side, a person, a, an individual is perfectly capable of creating and producing and releasing their own works entirely on their own. Of course, they need the cooperation of a platform like iTunes or Spotify or whatever it might be. They need the software and hardware to record the, the stuff on and so on and so forth. But it is possible to do it essentially, essentially on your own. But everything works so much better when there's effective teamwork. I mean, mm -hmm. it, collaborative writing. I live in Nashville now, and this is a town that's based on collaborative mm -hmm. creativity and teamwork and everyone really embracing and respecting their roles and the the division of of duty you know uh it's 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 amazing you find people who are so tremendous at what they do uh in that environment and they have a perfect avenue to do it in which is within the that musical team whether it's a band uh band and crew i mean the type of teamwork that it that it requires to make a tour happen oh, like wow it's, absolutely it's unbelievable it's mm -hmm. unbelievable. The bigger it scales up the more people and the more teamwork is necessary the more communication all of it and you said something very key just there you talked about everybody knowing their roles for what they've got to do and that that's so essential now a few weeks ago we had uh andre collins on the um teamwork advantage and he played on uh, a Super Bowl, I think it was Super Bowl 26 with the Washington Redskins. And he was talking about how everybody knew their individual roles. So it's not much different than a pro athlete in that situation. Absolutely. You don't need somebody who is lugging cables, telling the sound guy what to do or telling the lead guitarist, I think you should play a different chord. Certainly, and certainly not. Uh, certainly there are times and places to do that <laughs> and times and places <laughs> not to do it. You don't want to do it while you're laying the cables. You know what I mean? But maybe right. later on you could say Hey, I got this idea. And if, if everybody is, if there's open communication, you know, I want to, I always want to stress that 
to say to know your role can be taken in a number of different ways. And it can kind of have a, a connotation that there's a hierarchy of roles where, where one might be considered more or less important than another. And I find that, you know, it ends up being like a house of cards. <laughs> it's it, it, every mm -hmm. single component is, is essential to the entire structure. So to think of it like as, as a, you know, like a, a, a class system or a caste system, I think doesn't, doesn't work. Job done. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's good for everyone it's, to be respected for the position they were. They right. Did. It's like the cog of an old watch. If one tip breaks, the whole thing gets out of sequence and everything does not work. Exactly. And that, that's, that's so key. And that's what I've been speaking on for over, you know, 10, 15 years now is getting it and not just the team itself because you know you've got your team that if you're performing on stage you know you've got your immediate musicians but then you've got your guitar tuners off stage you've got your sound guys in the back you've got your lighting guys you've got your crew everybody else having to know so now we're at teamwork but we're also talking about collaboration exactly exactly and so when you're doing a tour everybody's there and that makes sense but let's talk a little bit about remotely in mm -hmm. other words, I'm sure you've worked with people in the past where you've been in Nashville and somebody's been in L.A. or somebody's been in New York or even Australia. All the time. How does that work? It's, it works amazingly well and incredibly smoothly as technology has improved for mm -hmm. it. Um, now, I mean, it's unbelievable the kind of, you could be face to face with someone writing a song, working on a thing in real time, streaming a mix that they're working on and giving them notes in real time. Uh, I, I know that Noah does that a lot. I mean, it's, it, it's so, it's super cool. The possibilities these days, um, yeah, I mean, it's really, the, the, it's kind of endless and, and people it's always wonderful to have that energy of being in the same room or to be close proximity to each other. But, you know, you can definitely do it from anywhere. Right. One of the definitions I use in my definition of teamwork is they have, the team has to possess harmonizing skills. Mm -hmm. And of course I use the term harmonize. You can use complimentary, but I like harmonizing and I go back and I make reference to the song Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. about how the harmonies had to come together in that song and how incredibly difficult that was in what 1976 compared to how that would be able to be done today indeed yeah that's something that could be done with like a plug-in to emulate the way that that sounds it's so funny although it would be i mean to do it in that way and the way that he that's because I mean, freddie mercury recorded most of those parts overdubbed i mean that's mm -hmm. one thing on a lot of the recordings on a lot of my records i've played all the instruments or most of the instruments myself and you have like i find i have to take a kind of a teamwork approach with myself i have to think yeah, that's I, a great point you know i can't be i can't be playing lead guitar all over the lead singer because i'm the lead singer also you know what i mean like <laughs> so. you, have to, you have to understand your own role at that point exactly and exactly. that's so key because today you can just record one track here and just easily put it together today oh yeah and that was impossible and it's funny because a lot of people still envision recording uh, uh, music as like everyone in the same room together playing the song and then it's done and everyone's like that was the take you know <laughs> it's just that it, it, that was how it used to be oh yeah but as soon as there was multi-track capability it, it people started doing stuff oh yeah and it just it just but, started to explode and the possibilities oh. have become endless at that point mm -hmm. so what do you have to do to prepare to work remotely versus if you're sitting in the same room with a set of musicians to record? Let's not even talk about songwriting here. Yeah. Let's just talk about to record something. What's the differences you have to go through? Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting. If you have a setup of your own, you kind of do need to have a, a setup of your own. So mm -hmm. the more professional it is, the better because right. the better your sound is going to be. But I mean, uh, our drummer for, for Brett Young, Billy Hahn, who's incredible, extraordinary musician, has this killer drum room where everything's just mic'd up and all this different percussion. And he has these amazing sounds. And all you got to do is say, hey, Billy, uh, you know, can I hire you to play the drums on, on this track and send him the track? He sends it back with the drums on. It sounds amazing. Boom. Done. And he doesn't have to leave his 
his uh, recording room. Right. You know, I've done the same thing so many times with guitar and with vocals. I've done it a lot on commercials, television commercials, mm -hmm. with my voice because a lot of the agencies are in New York or overseas or wherever they might be, and they send me the track. I do some recording over it, do the overdubs, if there's harmonies necessary, if they want multiple ideas, whatever it might be. H however involved they want to be, they can be, whether it's through a video chat mm -hmm. uh, format or, right. or on the phone, whatever it is. You know, email can be anything. You know, I tend to know what people want. I aim to please in those situations, you know what I mean? So most of the yep. time it ends up being a, a pretty cool thing. You know, I, I understand what they want and I try to deliver as much as possible. If, it, if they need a different thing, boom, give them a different thing and it's easy. Right. So you just brought up a key point. You know what they want and that's because you've communicated up front. Right, absolutely. So communication is still a key element whether you're working remotely or in person. For sure. Okay. And with today with Zoom and Microsoft Teams and all the other video components that are available, you can start to see some of the visual communication between people. Mm -hmm. And that, that's key, but it's still not quite the same. So there has to be a level of trust, would you say? For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So there has to be trust. What happens when you get into conflict with a team member about something? And I don't mean conflict like knock down, drag out fights, right. but one person thinks it should go this way. Somebody else thinks it should go that way. And you're actually in discussion. How does that work in, in a remote environment? I feel like like time is your friend in those situations most of the time taking taking some time and some space away from something especially when I'm if I'm listening to something and I feel really strongly that a certain part should be a certain way and I'm the only one who feels that way um, I will usually wait and see how it is. If I feel really strongly then I'll encourage everyone else like try it feel it out you know try it out mm -hmm. ultimately it comes down to peaceful communication right. you know uh just calm calm communication with the real intention of of communicating and, you know not a bunch of passive aggressive stuff which happens oh, a no, lot no. and it's very easy to happen uh, it, it happens it seems to happen pretty easily in writing it's nice to be able to see somebody face to face so that you can't really hide behind the email you know Right. No, you're absolutely right. Because in, in building a great team, we look at there has to be trust. There has to be a little conflict about how we make sure everybody's heard so yeah. that we've all got total commitment. And that's, that's where that starts to come out. And that's what's key. So let's, let's talk a little bit about songwriting because production side, stage side, we kind of get how that teamwork works. I mean, we've all heard the writing teams of Elton John and Bernie Taupin and things like that. Uh, Holland Dozier and Holland back in the 60s and how they used to produce stuff. So we know about a lot of those great ones. What's it like to try and work with somebody else and how does that process, the give and take work? Well, I've, I've done it numerous ways. For a while, I was, uh, I was doing a lot of writing just improvisationally. I would sing gibberish lyrics, but melodies and full song structure and everything, the whole harmonic structure would be there, everything except the lyrics. And so there have been situations where I've like just sent those iPhone recordings off to friends of mine and, and who are writers and said, hey, if this inspires you, then send me something back. And, and it's definitely happened where like okay. a song has come just from that alone. But then also just, you know, you, when you sit down to write a song, it, it, you, you got to feel out the other person. There are so many different approaches and for me it's really important to be open to any type of inspiration and to be able to go with the flow no matter how no matter where where the direction is going you know mm -hmm. um so i i, well, I don't know uh, when you've got yeah. a, a songwriting team that's you got has got experience in working together yeah it makes sense when you're just hooking up with somebody new to try and write a song, right? You know that that's a little different. So, what are the, some of the challenges you go through when you're working with somebody brand new and remotely? 
I think I think in general you gotta you gotta figure out the pace. You gotta get you gotta get the it comes down to communication again. Mm-hmm. You gotta figure mm-hmm. out the timing. Be willing to listen to take a break and see what's see what's happening. You know, um, but I don't know. It would be if I were writing a song with you right now. I would have a guitar and I would you know and I might just start kind of playing around with something, some idea, and then if you like it, you'd say, oh, that's interesting, and then. Maybe Maybe you can kind of take it to a different thing and then we're seeing it together and then it, it kind of doesn't matter where you are relative to the other person um, as long as you get that ball rolling then right and now with it today it's it's definitely more immediate feedback which I think has become pivotal okay? absolutely oh, because yeah. in the past you might record something send it off snail mail or even email it might take them a day to get to it listen to it play with it write it out send it back so there's that lag of communication so creativity tends to i guess get stagnant if it's the right way maybe the right word yeah so today we're looking there so it, it doesn't matter that you're you know thousands of miles apart no it doesn't it shouldn't you know i mean i think i think there's a learning curve uh, certainly yeah. if you have multiple people at a time, like I've had situations where I've been on the zoom with numerous people and it can get really confusing when, you know, who's talking and who's talking to whom and blah, 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 you know, just like it can get really confusing. Uh, so that's a learning curve, but we, uh, you know, at a certain point people had to adjust to talking on the telephone as well. You know, yeah. I've always found that to be quite, awkward and hard to figure out the kind of pacing of this is even easier because i can see your face (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly and that that's that's key because we start to get into those those aspects of things and starting to come together and then it works so well when it all starts to happen can you tell me about a time where something may not have worked really really well in that aspect i think that Without getting one of the naming names, right? Of course, absolutely, I wouldn't. But but um, <clears throat> I think when people are uncomfortable in their role, uh, they feel like they've been forced into a role, perhaps or something right. like that, and they they're they're uncomfortable with it. They don't want to be doing it. They and then a kind of resentment starts to develop within the whole team. And I think everybody needs to be equally devoted to their position regardless of what that position is you know Mm -hmm. and so and it can really just be so i've i've experienced some situations where people kind of felt like they were you know maybe maybe working doing something that that they felt might have been beneath them in some way Mm -hmm. you know and it can be very difficult for everybody in the team because even if other people agree it becomes a weakness in the foundation you know and ultimately it's not sustainable so you know no matter how you try the only way to really do it is either find a person who does feel that passion for that position or for that person to, to find a, a place of acceptance and, and passion within themselves. That's certainly possible also. Sometimes it's just a matter of point of view. You know, if you remove the idea of, of something being capable of being above or beneath you, if that doesn't exist in your world, then you don't have to worry about that. No matter what you do, uh, you can do it beautifully and brilliantly and passionately. Right. And that's, that's a key factor again. And I know I'm saying everything is a key factor, but in a teamwork, everything is really, really key um, in grasping the roles and making sure that we're comfortable in that. Because if somebody's not comfortable in something, their creativity may get stagnant. They may have problems. There could be a lack of communication. There's definitely going to be a, a hiccup of trust. Yeah. And so what I'm looking at now is a lot of what you've described, whether it's in the uh, touring aspect, being on stage and working, whether it's just yourself and a couple of sound guys in a smaller venue, all the way up to a, a you know a much larger 15,000 seat arena. You know, you've got, the, and the larger the group, obviously, the more people. So whether it's in the, um, the stage presence and the touring, whether it's in the studio, whether it's in the songwriting, a lot of what you've brought together is really no different than, you know, everybody has sitting in their own offices these days. And Absolutely. especially, you know, going through COVID-19 that we've all been going through in this part of 2020 <laughs> is 
we now have had to sit down on our butts and do more Zoom meetings. I've got some people who are doing Zoom meetings, six and eight meetings a day. I know, I know some people who are doing that too. It's crazy. So it is how we can how we can do it. So everything you've described is absolutely quintessential, not just to teamwork for the music industry or the performing arts industry. It is for every aspect of business, even all the way down to, you know, customer service and how we're serving people. Absolutely. I think there are certain systems that work that are very effective and you can you can put them into kind of any context and they will they will work and they'll function as long as you stick with it you know there's there's another aspect we got to make sure we're sticking with something long enough to see if it's going to work or not work we can't give up too early exactly well it always comes down to individual people and who have individual decision making abilities mm -hmm. you know so it's that's why trust becomes very important and to me it's ultimate it's not trust that somebody's going to be perfect and be do it you know it, it's it's not an unreasonable expectation or an unrealistic expectation it's just the idea that how well is this if you can if you can assess the situation and accept it for how it is in reality and not kid yourself. So many businesses fail because people don't want to see the failure because they take it personally. It hurts their ego. It makes them feel mm -hmm. adequate or, or so, you know, or like a failure. Um, I think if you can remove all that, take the judgment out of it completely, mm -hmm. you stand a much better chance of succeeding always. Oh, absolutely. No matter what you do. One of the, aspects I talk about when we talk about trust in a lot of my trainings and workshops is what you just keyed in on. Okay. And there is predictive trust that Bob is going to do what he is supposed to play the bass, whatever it happens to be. That's predictive trust. There needs to be another level that you just took it to that I refer to as vulnerability trust is allowing yourself to be vulnerable that somebody else can have a better idea. Open exactly. yourself up. And once everybody on that team starts to allow themselves to be vulnerable, then they all can grow together. Absolutely. I often say um, uh, that a person is capable of being right all the time if they're willing to admit that they're wrong when they're wrong. And then ultimately, you can end up being right if you if you welcome that that uh, the truth. Wait a minute. Let, let, let's say that again. That I, that got confusing. I say again. I say I, I'm always I can always be right eventually as long as I'm willing to be wrong temporarily. I can ultimately end up being right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly, and that's that's so important is to know our vulnerabilities and allow ourselves to be vulnerable, um, because then somebody's not going to try and backstab us. Exactly. exactly. And that's, that's so important. Um, you know, at certain points, I remember years ago, I used to do some ushering and I was actually ushering. I, I think it was a Frank Zappa concert. Oh, nice. I mean, <laughs> and I was on side stage and he was such a control person. He wouldn't let any of his additional musicians have more than a 90 second solo. So funny. Yeah, he was ex he was very controlling with the band and stuff like that. Huge, high standard, crazy standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it made this insane pedigree. But then the Grateful Dead, just the opposite. Exactly the opposite, yes. They just let it all so free low. flow, and that's why they were so powerful. <laughs> that's exactly true. Yeah. And so we start to bring that together. we got to bring that all into our own businesses and our own lives mm -hmm. um, and make sure that we're doing that so we allow ourselves to get engaged with it that way. What are some things that you would give to somebody who's trying to get into – a more team centric environment. What are some things that an individual person might be able to do that they, the, the base stages you might recommend, I'll put it that way. You mean to, to, to help them to kind of thrive within that environment? Yeah. I think it comes, I think so much of it is listening, willingness to be vulnerable and to be wrong, whatever that is. You know, I think it's kind of throwing out the whole idea of right and wrong. To me, that's a, a judgment uh, of, of, the, of the idea, which is unnecessary in that situation. You, want, you don't want to, to think of it as being good or bad, right or wrong. It just gets in the way. It gets people all emotional about it. So the thing is to, to think about it and what does it best suit? What's, what's best for the whole team? If you are really thinking, if you're going to be a part of a team, you got to think about the whole team and you have to put that unit uh, as you basically like it's 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 kind of a one plus one equals three situation because you maintain the autonomy of 
each individual. And then there's another unique entity that's created by the collaboration. You know, you're not sacrificing yourself entirely to this collaboration. You maintain yourself, but there's another entity there that deserves the same amount of respect. And it's creating a win-win. And that's, that's exactly. the key factor. Yes. Well, yeah, absolutely. See, it's, it's still great. All the parallels and you have all the words already because you, because in business, you know, they, they, they don't have the artsy part to get it all confusing. <laughs> right. And it's, it's, there, it's, it's so important to recognize that whether it's sports and entertainment or whether it's musical or whether it's movies, I have people in my workshops often come up with the types of teams they can think of. Yeah. And one of the greatest types of teams that people come up with is a dog sled team. Yep. Because there's so much communication, dog to dog, dog to human, human to human, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all those different aspects of what makes a strong team. So here's a situation now. You're performing with Brett Young now. Yes. Okay. And you're going to be doing, I don't know if they're going to be doing tours or how that's going to be working out. Yeah, we've done, I've, I've been playing with him for the last while and big tours. Sorry, go on. <laughs> so no, and that's great. I, I, it's fascinating. I love his music. So the question is, um, when you're getting ready to pull somebody into this team and you're bringing somebody new in um, as a leader, what do you possibly, or what does Brett necessarily, and I know you can't speak for him, right. but what do you all look for to bring somebody into your fold? I think we all probably would agree that so, someone's personality is is of the utmost importance. Their ability to communicate and to and mm -hmm. to thrive within a community and a, and a and a a group and a team. You know, I think that ends up being so important. Um, and obviously, your ability to do the job that you're there to do extremely well is of the utmost right. importance as well. But if I were to say which one is more or less important, like I would personally, if it were my decision, I would probably end up choosing a person that I can get along with better that I feel would be a smoother addition to the, to the group environment rather than somebody who wasn't as well adapted or adept, uh, but, but was better at playing their instrument technically or something like that. Right. And now you're talking, let's tie this into business once again. You're looking at organizations like Nordstrom from a retail point of view. They've often said that they can teach somebody how to stock a shelf, but they can't teach them how to be nice. Exactly. So there's that. The Southwest Airlines is the same way about teamwork and collaboration, which is that's what's brought them to be the most profitable airline in history. I so, love I've, I've done some some work with them, actually. Over the, I did a live at 35 uh, live performance in the airplane. And wow. they were a sponsor of a Sail Across the Sun, which is a six-man cruise that I, I was a part of, and did a whole bunch of stuff with, with Southwest Airlines. I love all the people that I've that I've worked with. Uh, right, there. they're amazing. So that that culture, that that corporate culture that they are cultivating, it really works, and it, it mm -hmm. makes its way to all the arms of the organization. Right, and so there's the key, another part. There is we're looking at culture, so inside of your group, you've got to have the right culture so everybody starts to come together. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what's fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really necessarily, in your industry, in the music industry, um, I've listened to a lot of your music, so your music range is eclectic, I guess is the right way absolutely. to say that? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. It's, it's super eclectic. I have a degree in ethnomusicology, which is world music studies. Wait, wait, so a degree in what now? Ethnomusicology. It's just a fancy way of saying world music. Okay. World music. Um, and so I've studied music from all over the world and it, it influences my creativity and I haven't put restrictions on myself to, to try to adhere to one specific genre or sound or anything like that. So yeah, it ends up being really eclectic. And one of the things I've started to notice, and this has been more uh, apparent probably in the last five to 10 years, is the extreme crossover of like of cross genres. Oh, absolutely. You know, and the, the belief in all of that, it's not just one genre. You know, back in the 70s, if you like country music and you were a country music star, you wouldn't even begin to talk rock and roll. Absolutely not. Yeah, it was, they were very, very separate. But they started to, to become more homogenous because people use genre, like you can use, you can kind of, 
quote an entire genre with a production decision by in, by mixing hard rock and hip hop, for example, hard mm -hmm. rock and rap. You know, those are two bold genre decisions, basically like using a genre as an instrument or as a production right. choice, you know? Right. And so I mean, that, that started happening, they started to become so interchangeable. And one of the things that's, that's so wonderful about music is that it, it can be as complex as you want it to be or as simple as you want it to be. And it all boils down to the same thing. It's an extremely uniquely human thing and and it's a it's a it exists within all human societies no matter yeah. what the circumstance it's it a way it emerges yeah. it's incredible. i mean i go back to um the uh walk this way by uh aerosmith mm -hmm. which was later then done by run dmc and how they blurged that together and that's a great example of that Yep, it is a perfect example of that. It was one of the early examples of it. Mm -hmm. And even hip hop in general, which I've done a lot of work in hip hop, Slim Kid Trey from the far side. And, and uh, I, I've even done some, some stuff with, with DMC, who I love. I love that. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, but those, like even hip hop itself came from using samples from records from 70s funk and soul and mm -hmm. R&B and things like that and turning them into beats and loops and 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 using that so you you're already using an entire genre of music as an instrument within yeah. a new genre yeah. you know so it's but the, 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 what you end up seeing is that they really are all the same you know there's there are there are through lines between all you can find a pivot point basically yeah. in every style of music no matter how different they seem to be i and a good example of this is i in all the touring i've done i've done so much so many different kinds of shows and i was doing like a solo acoustic tour i was somewhere in utah it was at some artist collective you know just like a, a show i picked up on the way and i immediately followed a very loud very aggressive heavy metal band and it, it was just me solo acoustic and what I did was I started with a blues, like a, like a traditional mm -hmm. Muddy Waters catfish blues, you know, so, okay. and everybody who had been moshing and smashing into each other and stuff like that and going crazy sat down and got so into it because I knew that that was going to be the pivot point for everybody there. I was like, I'm going to take it to something that's that's so deep. You don't even know why you're connected to it. You know what I mean? And it, it, it'll it right away everybody tuned right into it and it was so cool i you know it was just such a great experience and i realized it, it does it all boils down to the same and that brings us to the point of teamwork is not just the team that you had producing there yeah. but you brought the audience in as part of your team that's exactly right you we, we are doing this together we're in this together and sharing this unique experience that's how i've always approached my yeah and experience. so when you watch people like jimmy buffett or neil diamond or these groups that can get everybody garth brooks is amazing at this oh, yeah. about getting the audience to totally sing along with everything oh yeah and we with brett i mean everyone's so familiar with these songs he's he's had six consecutive number one hits mm -hmm now and so you know a substantial amount of the set is hit song number one hit songs there's radio smashes everybody knows every word in their set. every song it's so great but the, you know that that's that stuff happens that energy that you can create is exactly that's exactly where it comes from it comes from that we are all in this together we are all a part of the same team you know so let's, let, that's very interesting because now you just said everybody sings them all, they know them all. And after doing 30 or 40 shows of doing the same songs, mm -hmm. how does the team stay energized? That, that's something that a lot of folks just, it's tough. I mean, artists who perform four and five nights in a row, yeah. the same set, the same stuff. How do you get the energy to do that? And because in business, sometimes we're doing the same thing, repetitive business day after day after day. Yeah. So what do you do? Well, there are a number of different techniques that, that I use. One of my, my main approaches is just an overall perspective. I try to 
be present as as present as I can be within each moment and value it as entirely unique. It's just an illusion that we're doing the same thing over and over again. You're not doing the same thing over and over again at all. In fact, you're never doing the same thing twice ever. No, no two moments will ever actually be the same. And if that belief gets ingrained in you, then it, it trickles down to, to the way that everything works. And for me, it's been a unique way of approaching, not necessarily stylistically the way that I play it, but from my own point of view, what does this song mean to me now? I may have written it 20 years ago, but how do I feel about it right now? I'll never feel that way again, and I've never felt that way before. So in that moment, I have access to complete authenticity, complete presence, complete truth. And so we always have that opportunity. Also, you have the opportunity to improve. When you're working on a set and getting it super tight, believe me, there are way more details that, that we in the band and crew are noticing than the audience. We realize that, it, that, it's, that they're right. going to enjoy it no matter what, but we make it a passion for ourselves and for each other to encourage each other to continue to get better and and just bring more to it every single time every every show is another opportunity it's always brand new you have a choice every time you can say i'm going to do this i'm going to give this everything i've got you can do that every single time and your your ability to make that choice may seem like it's it's harder when you're tired so it's important to to get as much rest as you can. One really cool thing about the country music touring world is that it's mostly weekends. So there's, there's a, it'll be like three shows on and then you're back home and then three shows or, you know what I mean? Right, right. Cool. But it's not, it's different from the pop world where you'll be out on tour for three years and <laughs> playing with six nights a week, you know? Um, so it's much better because, you know, now I, I mean, we're so looking forward now, of course, to getting back out together on the road. We all miss each other and miss the miss the shows and miss the audience and everything. It was just it's just crazy. Right. But I was feeling that after being home and being like, you know, we'd get back together and get back on the bus, you know, after a few days of being apart and be like, I can't wait to do this again, just because we had that little break and that right. little bit of time off. So if you build that in, if you make sure you know that that's what you need. And if each individual knows themselves and what they need, you know, on, on tour buses, we have bunks and we, we try to really respect everyone's personal space when they are in their bunk, like no matter what time of day it is. If it's your thing, if you're the person who, who needs to sleep 20 hours a day, do it. If you're a basset hound you know what I mean, of a person <laughs> and need to sleep by the fireplace and that's what gets you, makes you your best, then go for it. And the, the freedom to be able to do that and to not be judged and to not have other people looking down on you because of your choices being different from theirs. Yeah, your idiosyncrasies. Exactly. Exactly. To, I, I love, I, I just, I just choose to take a positive perspective on all of these things, you know, and, I, and then I encourage that and it ends up working a lot of time. And again, I like something you said about the team and you just got to be present in the moment. Yes. So I'm going to take that back a little bit and talk about another episode of the teamwork advantage we had a few weeks ago uh, when we had Harry Paul, one of the co-authors of the book fish. Yeah. And in there, one of the principles they talked about was to be present, specifically about being present, because when you're working with a customer today and that customer asks you the same question that another customer 20 minutes ago may have asked you or yesterday may have asked you, <laughs> it, you can't get upset because they don't know each other. And it's not. like when you're doing the music, it's the same scenario that people, they're, they're experiencing something maybe the same, maybe slightly different, but you've got to be present. Absolutely. And, and you are, it, but just ultimately, it's your choice whether or not to be that way. There yeah. are no circumstances that can actually prohibit you from doing that that are external. You know, only internal things can prohibit or enable someone to, to, to do that and take that perspective. So it really is just a matter of personal choice. And how great is it when you've got a team that where all pistons are firing? I mean, that's part of the reason why we can't wait to get back on the road. Like this crew with, with Brett right now is unbelievable. Like we've just got it 
down. We love each other. We're a family. We choose to spend like holidays together and stuff. <laughs> really, it's 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 pretty uh, it's pretty unique, and it's all from from taking these types of approaches. Right. You know, we just want well, what's best for the team for everybody. You know. Yeah. First of all, I've known Brett for a really long time, and I've always supported him, and I've loved him forever. When I saw him first break into massive uh, success, I was thrilled, and I had no idea I would, I would end up playing guitar with him. Um, so it's just great. It's a wonderful extension of existing relationships and friendships, and you know. I always say the less I try to micromanage the outcome of my life, my future, basically, the, the cooler things end up being when they happen. And then I have this experience of being pleasantly surprised <laughs> by all of these things rather than Love being it. disappointed because something doesn't re, uh, you know, live up to an expectation or whatever it might be. It just ends up being like, what fantastic weird unique adventure is going to happen next you know the truth is i don't know and i'm looking forward to finding out yeah and that's that's wonderful real quickly one question simple answer how many different instruments do you play i you think that's a simple answer <laughs> I, I i don't know i've never taken count and it also really depends on how you how you define play you know what i mean there are some there are like guitar i have a tremendous amount of experience and mm -hmm. I've done a ton of practice and study and performing and playing. So like, you know, I play that instrument like, like I invented it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, I, and I most certainly didn't. And I'm very grateful for the fact that the, this instrument that I have such a close relationship with was invented already when I was born. Um, <laughs> but I've also played piano my entire life. Of course, my voice is an instrument. Absolutely. I love playing all different kinds of percussion. When I was when I first started my my ethnomusicological studies in college, uh, I started by playing Indonesian gamelan music. And and studied other, which is, which an uh, Indonesian gamelan is an ensemble of instruments. Right. So, uh, so right. in order to play it, you need to be able to play every instrument and talk about teamwork. That was the, that was perhaps the greatest and the most perfectly timed lesson for me in, on the importance of listening and teamwork and collaboration, cooperation, uh, and how it applies directly to music. A gamelan is not a single instrument. It's a multitude of instruments that are all played at the same time. A single person can't play them all. It, this music can't be made by a single person. Wow. It can only be made in, in, in collaboration. And it's incredible. And the style that I started studying is very slow and meditative. It's all about intention and tone because there there are other regions where it's really fast and very clangy and that's the that's the style and that's what they right, do. Right. This style is all about tone. So every time you strike a a, a key on a xyl their xylophone type instruments or there are a bunch of gongs and and uh, percussion, flutes, uh, stringed instruments, all kinds of instruments within the ensemble. Um and yeah, I mean it was the best it was the best the cool. best Less oh, you're right. That's, there's not an easy answer to that question. No, there isn't. So it's it's a lot. It's tons of instruments because I can kind of pick up. I can make anything sound good if I have, you know, if if, if I can keep it simple enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or as complex as you want. Well, yeah. sure. If I want to really get into it and take the time, but I mean, just upon, just like whatever. Give me an instrument. Let me figure out how to right. make it sound cool. Right. I can do something with it. Well, speaking of making music sound cool, <laughs> I, I had asked you earlier if you'd be open to this, and I'd love to hear you. Have you just? Uh, we'll see how it sounds going out over a podcast. But you've got a, I think you've got a guitar there or something. I do indeed. Let me uh, let me just see if it sounds good with just this one microphone. How about that? Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, while he's getting set up, Keaton's going to take the time to play uh, a song for us here on this uh, Teamwork Advantage podcast. And if you like what you're hearing, make sure you share it with everybody else. So let's see what we got, Keaton. All right, let's see if we got this. What's this called? This is called One, Two, Three, Go. When I walk these streets, I feel a certain passion. When you're there with me, we start a chain reaction and fall. 
again All again I'm off my feet, I'm swept away, I'm stranded Got my heart tethered, the disbelief abandoned the hard way I learned that hard Built a castle out of sticks and bones. Here we go. When I get back home, it's back to life. One, two, three, go after the months of sacrifice. Where did they go? Take time to stop and feel alive. What do we know? Who I know I'm feeling when it's right. One, two, three, go. Out here alone, remember independence. We're gonna bring it all back home and feel that confidence. Feel that confidence. Thinking in circles keeps my mind well rounded. Searching for subjects just to stay confounded and trying things. I'm always trying things. Built a castle out of sticks and bones. Here we go. When I get back home, it's back to life. What do we go after the months of sacrifice? Where did they go? The time to stop and feel alive. What do we know? Who I know I'm feeling when it's right. Sounds like my philosophy in life. One, two, three, go. You know <laughs> exactly. That's well. That's what. That's what it is. Everything's what turns out to be one, two, three, go. You yeah, know, I love it. <laughs> ready or not, here's life. Ready yeah. or not, whatever is happening, that's what just happened. <laughs> yeah, no practice round here. Keaton Simons, it has been an absolute thrill here to have you on this uh, episode of the Teamwork Advantage. Um, have everybody go out and see Brett Young when he gets back out on tour for sure. Yes, indeed. And, uh, and I do, I do solo performances as yeah. well. And, and I'm always releasing music or my music is being used in a film or a television show or something like that. And so check yeah. it all out. So More let's check better. your social media aspects out. So tell us uh, how people can follow you on uh, social media. You got it. Um, on Instagram and Twitter, which I'm very rarely on Twitter these days, but Instagram, I dig. Uh, it's at Keaton Simons, K-E-A-T-O-N-S-I-M-O-N-S. -S. And uh, Facebook, at Keaton Simons Music is awesome. my, is my uh, pro page. And go in there, follow him. I know you've got oh, thousands of followers in there with your music, and you put stuff out all the time that way. Yeah. So get out and have a chance to see him perform. Uh, see him perform with Brett Young. Wherever you have a chance, it's been a privilege to understand how teamwork and business, teamwork and music all come together. Thanks again, Keaton. We appreciate it. Thank you. And as my philosophy goes, everybody remember, don't have a good day because a good day is just being average. Make sure you make it a great day because you are not average. Next week, we'll have another exciting guest here on the Teamwork Advantage. Take care.
You've been listening to the Teamwork Advantage with Greg Gregory. Be sure to like, subscribe, and activate the bell icon to be notified of future episodes. To learn more about how Greg can help your organization develop a powerful winning culture, visit TeamsRock.com. That's TeamsRock.com.